Hebrews 1, 1 to 4. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers through the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world, who, being in the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature, upholding the universe by the word of his power, having made a purification of sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Phenomenal. So amazing. So powerful. We've studied this in the past. If we took biblical theology with me, we discussed this passage. So there's so much here. We're not going to, we're going to highlight things. We'll highlight things concerning uh, revelation, but we're not going to focus on the revelation component that we did in biblical theology, just because we could spend all our time on that. So we're going to focus more on the description of the sun, but we'll talk through all these things. So what I'll do is I'm just going to start highlighting some things. Some, some of it will, will be reviewed from biblical theology, but there'll be definitely a lot of new information and content. Feel free to interrupt me or to ask a question. Um, if I ask a question, feel free to answer. And so <clears throat> just moving along here, the, the first thing I want to highlight is the main verbs. So here we have, um, well, I'll ask the question, what are the, what in verse one, uh, verse one and two a, what are the main actions? That spoke. spoke speech, right? So we have, he has spoken, correct? So this is an action. And so let's think about this for a second. When we think about the, the uh, what are some parallel ideas that we have in scripture concerning God speaking? So if we say that God spoke to us, what's another word, a parallel word? It's a big word that we use in theology or um, people will say, well, what's some other words that we can think about for, for, for God speaking? Well, what do we say that God is doing? Revelation. Revelation. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Hold on one second here. So we got, we have um, revelation, revealing. So this is the act, uh, re uh, reveal, or we could say revelation. And then, Boy, what did you say? Says, God says. Yeah, God says. So what's the noun form, form of God says? What's the noun form of that? Message, message. Okay, message. And what's, what's another... Besides yeah, yeah, message. yeah. It, it goes back to revelation. Yeah, it 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 goes back to what he says is a revelation because so so we have God, we have the message, but so just to be so this is this. I hope this will bring some ideas together. Is this not in the noun for, form the word of God? Amen. That, that's just the noun form. I hope things are coming together for you. So, God spoke. He's the actor. God, so we could talk about in this passage, God revealed himself, God, God spoke, God gave us his word. And so here we have several objects. The object here, we have the, the fathers. This is, this is one object. Here we have us, us. Okay, so this is God. So we have the same action, but there is differences here. So if we can think here, we could say big idea here. This is, this is revelation. Let's put revelation here. And he, here also is the, the main idea is revelation. Okay. All right. And we're going to get very practical, very quick. Okay. And there's this, if everyone can see this, there's a contrast. Now, this is not good and bad, but, but a ratcheting up, okay? And the contrast we can clearly see in the word but. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Now, watch this, okay? In both instances, God speak. God, God speaks. So this is uh, God, God speaks. So this is not good and bad. It's, 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 it's good and better, Okay, so the correlation here would be that of um, good and better. 
So maybe, maybe we, maybe we have to really qualify this word. It's not negative. Okay. Just so that we're clear. Okay. But there is a, what I'm trying to get at, we want to ask the question, is there a qualitative difference here? All right. Yes. Yeah. You're, everyone can see it. It's not hard to see. Okay. And so let's just highlight a couple more things here. So we have several, several things going on here in it, at many times and in many ways. So this is dealing with a time reference and this is de dealing with a, with a means, or we could say, you know, we could say mode. maybe mode, mode, who said mode. mode? That's good. Someone has mode. Excellent. You're there. You're there. Okay. And then look at this, the specific agent by which he does this are the profits. Okay. So that's great. That's good. Okay. But look here now, watch this. Look at the, look at the contrast here. Okay. So, in so long ago, this is a, a time reference. We could actually say this um, in former times, former or first in first times. Okay. God spoke to the fathers through prophets, many different times, many different ways, right? So sometimes the ways are super opaque. They're not clear. Like what, what's he saying? It's very confusing. Okay. But look at this now, look at the contrast in these last days. He is spoken by his son. And so here we clearly see qualitative difference. Anyone who has a business and has workers and has children knows there's a qualitative difference in this, right? You have a business. Um, the son knows the father's will. We'll use Henry. Henry has the biggest business here, I think, um, in fairness. So he has many workers and he also has children, right? Henry, is there not, talk to me about the qualitative difference if you send your son to say something compared to just a worker that, that you, that you have, you want to talk to us a minute about that? The quality difference, the impact, the impact. Okay. The go, ahead, Koyo, boy. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, it will have, it will have something to do with the impact with the message that the, that the son or the, the child of injury will bring to the employee vis-a-vis -vis an employee, no matter how high ranking he is in the company, there will be a big difference because if the son or the daughter of Henry will speak, it has a different impact upon the employee. Yeah, so there's a seriousness or a, like, like a gravity. Diba, they, they, everyone's like, oh, it's the son. It's going to happen. Go ahead, Danny. Go ahead, Danny. Uh, the credibility. Credibility. The or the weight. We had that at the weight. weight of the yeah. And also, what else? What else do we have here? So we have the weight. What about the clarity? Go, go ahead. Uh, the intimacy. Yes. Intimacy. The, the, that the son knows. And the message is not going to be skewed. It's not going to be corrupted, right? Anyone else want to add? Henry, do you want to add anything to this? They, they spoke for you. Yeah. <laughs> and my son has the... Uh... Okay, we have given the authority to our son you know, in all, all releasing before any, any checks or check or something like that, financial, financial matter, it should be, it should go, goes through Haggai. He has to validate, uh, validate it. So everybody has to wait. Without validating it by Haggai, that cannot move. All trucks, uh, all payments cannot move. So there's def. Uh, Haggai has a much bigger role. He has authority, and and so then let's just add one more here. I want to add one more here. There's clarity. There's no confusion. Someone who goes and, and sends a message, maybe he's a lower level worker. He doesn't know maybe Henry's big plan, right? So. So someone responds and asks a, a, a follow-up question. He can't give it. He doesn't know. He doesn't know, right? Um, and even thinking about uh, the, someone that's speaking back through the sun or communicating through the sun, um, speaking with Haggai, it's as if he's speaking with 
Henry. Do you see that? I mean, there's just there's there's just such a, 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 a an incredibly powerful level, uh, deep level there, right? And so we see that in these last days, God has spoken to us by his son. And so, of course, the us, of, of course, the us would be initially Hebrew Christians. But this is signifying the church. And if you notice here, this, this last days, this is the end of these days, okay? And so let's ask, let's, let's be clear here, okay? Where, where do we receive this spoken word? Let's get, let's get down to the needy gritty. Where do we receive the spoken word from the Son? Come from the scriptures, from the Bible. Yes. The scriptures, and so that's why Paul says, all scripture is breathed out by God. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, complete for every good work, okay? And so we've talked about this before in biblical theology, but to, to think about waiting for another word in this means, <laughs> it's just, in some ways, it's, I shouldn't say, it's offensive. Like if, if, if I'm not focused on the word of God that has been given to us through the son, and I'm waiting for another word through a prophet or something else. Okay. That that's, that's just like, wh why do you see that? Uh, it, it, it's so deficient in, in, in its content. And so that's not to say that, um, that God doesn't speak to us through his spirit concerning pract practical in, 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 in what we should do. But it is to say that his fundamentally, his will has been given to us. Uh, and so this is the key here. Okay. This is past tense. God has spoken and it's concerning revelation. So when we talk about God speaking to us and, and maybe calling us to a specific ministry or to do something specific in our context, that we do not consider that special revelation. Okay. He's not giving us a new revelation concerning his word and his will. Okay. That's, that's practical within our own lives. Um, that is in perfect agreement with his revealed will and word. Okay. Is everyone tracking there with me? So anyone who talks about waiting for a new word of God concerning revelation is already outside of traditional orthodoxy. Okay. Um, and, and so then this, when it comes to Christology, think about this here, big, big. All right. What we're describing here in this, in this section, here we go. We are seeing Christ as the word of God. In comparing it with the prophets, it's not that Christ, uh, I guess I, I'm not going to beat around the bush. And so this indicates to us the office of his of, of prophet. This is where we then get the fundamental office of Christ being prof prophetic. Okay. Does everyone see that? So in, in the title of the class, Christ, Jesus, uh, Christology, prophet, priest, king, this is one of his fundamental offices as, as, as the prophet, the prophet par excellence, the prophet of God. And so we see throughout the gospels, right? He's a prophet. He's more than a prophet. So it's not to deny that he's not a prophet. And so we often, like, even for me for a while, I was thinking so much about how the, the, new, the, the gospels only emphasize maybe his priestly duty in the offering of his, of his body or his kingly duty commanding. But, but most fundamental, one of those fundamental offices of, of Christ is this prophetic office. And this is nothing more than revealing to us God's, the, the word of God. And we can summarize this when we talk about revelation this way, the person and will of God. He's revealing to us the person of God, the Trinity, and he's revealing to us his will, who God is and what he commands of, of us, what he demands of us. Okay. And so we see here, fundamentally, Christology in this passage, Jesus Christ 
as profit. We also see in Christology, and this goes without saying, the Son of God. And so we look at this title, Son of God. Now, elsewhere, we can we can study that. We'll, we'll, we'll pick that up more. Um, and so Son of God is the, the second person of the Trinity. And we're going to prove that in a minute here, okay? And so we see in... <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 for sure, the accent here is on revelation because the, contextually, the issue with the Hebrews is they're they're struggling with going on to maturity or falling back into the old way. They want to go back to the prophets. They want to go back to the Old Testament. Okay, and 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 the author of Hebrews is setting them up, saying, "No, God has spoken fi- uh, climactically in finality." through his son. So that's the primary purpose. But so so, so but but these are presuppositional foundational concepts behind that purpose that are true nonetheless, okay? And so we see in in uh Hebrews 1 verse 2 Jesus Christ as prophet the son of God, okay? Now look at here what we're going to see here is I'm going to highlight for us these words here. We have whom, whom, who, okay? And so what this is doing for us is this is, and if you can imagine here, this, this, this connects here, okay? So what's going on here is when we look at this word of, of, of whom, this is going to be giving for us descriptions, so the whole rest, the whole rest of verses two, uh, verses two B. So this is verses one, two B through four is concerning descriptions of the sun. Is everyone tracking there with you? everyone sees that, right? Incredibly powerful. So God has spoken climactically in finality through his son period, right? And then everything else is the sun. What else do we need? If we've seen the sun, we've seen the father. There's no need to describe who God is. Does everyone see, does everyone see that here? And so now we see the supremacy and exaltation of the sun because he is God himself. If he's not, then this is offensive. Does everyone see that? This is offensive to God because it's just like God spoke and then we're going to deal with this man here, right? And it's, and it's saying, no, God has spoken climactically, finality, in finality, through his son. Hear him, <laughs> right? That's in the gospels. Listen to him. This is my son whom I will please listen to him, period. So the rest of, of, of verses 2b through 4 concerns descriptions of the son. So number one, number one description here. So we got this number one. Let but let's do this. Let's highlight all the actions. So, so, so go ahead. We, 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 we did the breakout session with actions. Each person, you can just, um, let's, let's take a time. What are the actions that you notice here? What are the actions? So, uh, go ahead. Upholds created. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's go here. So we have, I heard two words we have created here. And then we also have upholds. Appointed appointed where else what else words making purification yes yes yes. so this is a this is an action here what else sat down sat down okay great i think that's it i think those are the actions here um Uh, what about many ways okay many uh many ways so that's 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 um that's a means describing the main action of 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 spoke Okay. He spoke how through many ways. So it's, it's, it's adding a, it's describing the, the action of, of speech that, that, that's a, that's a good, that brings us to a good question. Cool boy. There is one more action here. I, I, I see one more action here. Uh, what is having, that action? Ha, having become. Okay. So we're going to come back to that because that is. And become and obtain. I have additional having become and ob- obtain. Obtain. Okay. So we have obtained to inheritance uh okay so here hold on one second here okay so right here 
ha, so then this is the word in my translation has inherited right has inherited uh, we can come back to Kluibel, but okay. So we have we have these actions here, um, and so we notice here the actors in these actions, right? The act, the act, the actor is both God, the Father, and God, man, the Son. Is everyone tracking there with me? Those are the two actors in this passage, and we we need to identify where those. Um, what actions they're doing, okay? Now, um, and then we have, so let's go back to Koi Bulboy's one observation here, which I like, is the state. So there are several states. Um, and so one of those states Koi Bulboy mentioned was having become, right? That's a state, a state of being. And then we have any other states in here? Descriptions? Excellent. Yeah. So the excellent name. Yeah. Okay. So has inherit the name. Okay. Yeah. So is, is, so this is a state here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So there's one here and then there's also one up here, right? Being, being the radiance of God. I think in your translation, you might have is right. Who is the radiance, who is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint. Mine is brightness of his glory. Okay. Okay. So the other is express image of his person brightness so we'll we'll talk about that and the what was the other one you had there express image okay excellent all right so um uh great all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to go through each line here and and highlight what's going on let's look let's let's get it let's get in close and look at this statement here, uh, whom he appointed the heir of all things, whom he appointed the heir of all things. And so, of course, we can first clearly identify that the he must be God, God the Father. So God the Father appoints, appoints, this is the action. And so he's appointing Christ, the Son, the heir of all things, okay? And so the the point the the purpose that's going on here with the son is he is he is being given heir and this is of what of all things so um let's think for a second here the fact that he's given the heir uh this is the this would be a noun and this this is focused on the um the person what's a a synonym for the heir of all things how could we rewrite this including the things perspective. So what do we call the things? It's not the air. What is that? What is the, what is, what are, what are those things? It does something to do with control. Okay. Yes. But ownership, I, ownership or control. Yeah. So no, you're, you're correct. There's, 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 um, and possession, control and possession, control as into the control and possession. Yeah. So no, so that's, so, so there's this, there's this, there's this uh, idea of, of lordship okay lordship for sure and so the son is lord over all things excellent i agree with that but i'm, I'm just thinking so if someone receives if an heir receives a property what is the property typically called in connection with heir it's just a synonym but inheritance what, inheritance. Inheritance. inheritance yeah inheritance excellent so inheritance all right so then we can ask the question where in the old testament does someone receive an inheritance of a lot of things. But so let's go to a passage of scripture though, um, that really highlights this because so we have here, let's just be clear here. We have God, the father, the act of giving an inheritance to an heir. Okay. And we have the son. So there's, there's five components here. So we're looking for a parallel passage where these five components are present. Okay. So let's go to Psalm Psalm chapter two, bring this up on the screen here. Can everyone see that? The nations rage, the people's plot in vain, the kings of the earth. So big, big. The kings of the earth set themselves. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. So here it's not the son, it's anointed, okay? Saying, let us burst their bonds apart. Let us cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord 
holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify in them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. And then this transfers to the son. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage. Now, maybe this is a good translation, maybe not, but, but look, at, look at the Hebrew word below. Can everyone see the Hebrew word below? Possession or inheritance. So literally, ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance. <laughs> the ends of the earth, your property, <laughs> your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. Rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and you perish along the way. <laughs> For his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. This is not a fickle God. This wrath is in, is in conjunction with those who will not submit to the lordship they will not submit to the lordship of the lord god almighty or his son so coming back here we have in psalm in psalm 2 we have the lord the son the the appointing he sets his son on his holy hill correct he appointed the heir of all things, all right? And then you have the inheritance. Is everyone tracking there with me? Uh, so, and, and so the son in, in the context is called the son and also Christ or anointed one. So although you don't have Christ in, in, in Hebrews 1, 1 to 4, you have it in the illusion quotation of psalm 2 does everyone see that and so the son is god's chosen vessel his his anointed person by which all things are inherited and all things are, are ruled okay and psalm 2 psalm 2 is going back to the davidic covenant okay and the Davidic covenant is the fulfillment from the Abrahamic covenant, right? All the nations will be blessed. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, next week we'll start back in Genesis and we're going to track all this. So right now I'm just highlighting these things. The Abrahamic covenant, you're going to see all that. Okay. And the Abrahamic covenant goes back to Eden and the promised offspring, the first telling of the gospel. So what we have here is the appointing of all things, his son. This is, this is in conjunction with the fulfillment of his promises. Okay, and so this is where, this is where and we're going to go into heretical doctrine, okay? What, 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 what heretical views will say is, see, God appointed the son, right, coming down here. Uh, I, today I have begotten you. And they'll say, see, the son must be created, and therefore... He's a created being, and therefore he's not God, okay? So you can kind of see. You're like, ah, it's kind of, it's kind of there, okay? The problem is, is that uh, from an orthodox historic creed perspective, we, would, we should gladly say amen as it pertains to Jesus' human nature. This is concerning the promise, the promises given in the garden uh it's it's concerning the promises of uh in time and space in in creation okay and so this here is focusing upon jesus christ's humanity we should all say amen to this everyone should say amen but even in psalm 2 there seems to be the, the son is 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 the it's the it's the Davidic son. It's a it's a messianic psalm. Messiah is just again anointed one, and so you have the the earthly king that is is set on the Zion. But 
even Zion is transcending beyond Jerusalem, right? To all the nations, right? So now it's, it's, it's all the nations of the earth, okay? And then look at this. Kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish in the way. Uh, his wrath is quickly kindled. This is already beyond. <laughs> this is already beyond. This is like superpower, right? How can you just, if he becomes angry, you just die like that? Well, because if the son is in fact God himself, it's very easy for you to perish very quick. And then this is the key down here. And we're going to get to also in Hebrews, blessed are all who take refuge in the son. Okay. Uh, refuge. Uh, this let's, let's just look up this word here. Look, look up in, in the dictionary. This word here is to, to confide in, to have hope in, to trust <laughs> protection. Only God, right? Don't put your trust in man, right? Don't put your trust in man. The prophets say that because he's going to let you down. But blessed are all who put their trust in the son. And so already uh, veiled, right? The Old Testament is hidden what's revealed in the New Testament. Veiled in the Old Testament is this transcendence of the son. The son is a man, but he's more than a man, okay? Now, the cults will say, Ah, he, he became God, right? Mormons became God, uh, right? Wrong, okay? And so we're going to prove that in a moment. All I want to highlight in, in Psalm 2 is the fact that even in the promise of the Davidic king and the, and the, and the Davidic kingdom, the, the heir, the, 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 the offspring of, of Abraham, the offspring of Eve, there's already this idea of transcending human nature, it's beyond human nature, okay? It is human nature and beyond, okay? And so then, then if ever, if ever you had a doubt, one C, through whom, through whom means, through whom God created the world. This is, this is, uh, this literally is, uh, if you look up, it's not cosmos, which is world typically. This word here is, if you look up in Greek, is the ages. The ages, and this refers to uh, the, the use of this word in, in this type of context, actually refers to the universe, including time and space. <laughs> so it's all, so it's, look here, it's all things. <laughs> it's all things. Another way of saying all things, time and space, okay? And so notice here, the sun is not part of the creation, right? The sun is not part of the created act. He is the means by which God creates, but he himself is not part of the creation. So then this, we, we acknowledge he is, he is human. He has a human nature. He's also divine. He's outside of creation. And so this is where the, all the cults fall short. They fall on their face, right? We want to say amen when they say he's a man, amen. But then they miss that second part. The second part is that he's also 100% God, 100% man, 100% God. Two, so incredibly powerful here. So incredibly powerful here. And so here we highlight his divine nature. Okay, his divine nature. Any, let's just take a pause here. Any, any questions or comments to this point? Uh, you, you mentioned, you mentioned Psalms. Today I have begotten you. you know? Yeah. Today you, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. It's also quoted in Hebrews 1.5. Yes. Uh, that, is, that is the question. I was supposed to ask that later, but since you already mentioned that, I am forced not to answer. How should we understand that word today? And the begotten. Yeah. So, so, so in, in, in these contexts here, this is referring to um, his humanity. So coming back here, the Lord said to me, you are my son today. I begotten you. This is referring to the son of David. So we agree with that, right? God, if, if we go to, if we go to second Samuel seven, God is going to, to adopt 
um, he's going to make the son of David his son. Okay. So this, so in, in acknowledging this, this, this in no way br- deals with his divine nature. It's concerning his, his, his humanity. Are, are you tracking there with me? Uh, Koyo Ko- 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 Bull Boy? The, the issues with begottenness in the creeds uh, concern primarily the only begotten son from John, because there the discussion of begotten is concerning the, the, the divinity and his eternality. Okay. And so the creeds, we can, we can talk about that when we get to John one, I feel as if there, it's just beyond it's, it's not concerning this question. There's, there's no issue here because this Psalm is concerning messianic promises in time and space. And there's a time when, so, so we would say that in, in Romans one, one to five, if you're talking about God's son becoming a man, and then he was, he was declared to be the son of God in power. In, in that sense, that's a public. So if we want to talk about this, a public declaration of who the, the son was in eternity, that's completely fine. Okay. But concerning begottenness from the human perspective, we have to declare that Jesus is a hundred percent human because then we can fall into the other side where he's only divine. And the, 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 a whole nother set of heresy was coming where he's only defined divine. The Greeks could not uh, imagine a God who becomes, takes on flesh. So he only appeared as a man. He wasn't really a man. And so you can fall into the other heresy. And so in many ways, this, you are my son today, I begotten you, is um, guards against both denial of his humanity or denial of his divinity. And this is why the creeds, we'll look at this later, the creeds, uh, combining the two was wrong. We do not combine the natures. The natures are, are distinct and separate, but somehow interconnected, Okay. We're not confusing the natures. We're not inter- intermingling the natures. And yet we're not saying it's two. <laughs> and and this, is where, this is where we get to, this is a divine mystery. It's a divine mystery. We acknowledge the nature of the divine, the nature of the human, and the, divat- the, 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 the nature of the divine is eternal, the exact same substance as the Father, equal. Okay. And, and it's tricky because, because the second we see one text, we want to jump on that. (laughs) We want to jump on it and ride it. And we have to, it's a razor blade. It's a razor blade and we cannot fall off on either side. The second we fall off on either side, we're in heresy. We, we declare both and we recognize that it's a divine mystery because God is infinite and we are finite and that's it. Okay. We see it here. We see his divine nature, a hundred percent. We see his human nature, a hundred percent. Yet we see them separate, but not two men, but not two people. Not, it's, it's, and we're going to get into, we're going to, we're going to quote the creeds because there's also the, 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 the Chalcedon statement. Um, and so a lot of the creeds guarded against what we must not say but they did not want to divide, d- define it precisely because it's a mystery. Okay. I want to, I want to highlight that. Okay. So many times where w- it seems like we're speaking out both, both, both of our mouths and, and anyone who wants to, wants to choose one or the other wrong. We choose both and we let it remain. Okay. Great question. Koya Bull Boy. Anyone else? Anyone else? Follow up. Yeah. Follow up. Follow up. Okay. We'll go follow up. Go ahead, follow, follow up, up and then Paul. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. follow up. So if we are to define today, so it's not in reference to time, but it's reference to an event when Jesus became man. Well, so it's also time. In time and space, he, he was born of a virgin, right? It's time and it's an event. It's both, right? But, but in saying that, the son, God sent his son into the world, <laughs> right? So we cannot say... The, the second person of the Trinity was, 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 be, was, was born. Okay. He was eternal. And so the begottenness in the creeds concerning his eternal sonship are in relationship to the father. And there's a mystery there. Okay. 
but it's not when, when the creeds speak of begottenness with the father as the son, eternal son, it's not created. It's not reference to create it. It's reference to relationship and that's it. Okay. Is everyone tracking there with me? Um, I can speak of, a, of my, my father son relationship without at all describing my origin, right? Because is it not true? You can adopt a son and the son has a father-son relationship, but he's not from his father, right? So when we, we can speak of a father-son relationship, even as, as weak as the analogy is in our, in, our, in our human context, we can speak of that relationship without origin, without origin. It's just a relationship. And so the begottenness mentioned in the creeds concerning Christ's etern God, the son's eternality, it's not, they were clear on it, it's not concerning creation. It's just in relationship and that's it. Okay. All right. So go ahead. Yeah, oh, Paul, go ahead. Follow up. Be, uh, my observation based on your uh, no, uh, statement, uh, the nature of the being of um, Jesus or nature is like the will that it's not comprehensive, but we can identify it through the scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, and this is where philosophy falls short and if we if our fundamental foundation is the word of god logic and human philosophy will fall short when it comes to trinitarian and uh the, the nature of christ because we're dealing with the infinite so it's helpful but it will fall short and that's where we say it's a mystery excellent very good excellent i i hope we're we're, we're there this is going to be very helpful when we go into the next part who being the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature. Okay, so, so now we're again dealing with, uh, so this is the second description. He's, he's God, the, the creator God of the universe. Uh, he's the one who has been chosen to be the heir of all things, number one. Number two, so we could even refer to him as, as Christ. Christ here, we can refer to him here as creator God. He's, he's part of the creator God, the second person. All right. And then here, now you tell me if this focuses upon his humanity or his divinity. Okay. Uh, who being the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature. Okay. So uh, we have expressed image here. So this right here would be, would be physical, right? If we say the imprint, right? So we have a, we have, if you can imagine, a, we, have a, we have a seal, right? There's a piece of paper, and there's some type of imprint left on the paper, right, from the stamp, right? That's the imagery that's going on here. This is stamp and paper. And then here, you have radiance. So if you can imagine, you have the sun, and then we have... We have light, okay? Now, in this example here, you see some reflection. I don't like the word reflect. I do not like the word reflect. I think right, radiance. Radiance is, 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 the, is, the, is the correct translation because light is of the same substance as the source, right? But again, this is, this is also physical, okay? This is also physical. And so, um, but yet it's the same source as the glory of God. And so uh, this is, uh, this is uh, divine or, 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 or spirit, spiritual. And I'm not saying spiritual in a non-literal sense. I'm saying spiritual in a, in a different kind. Okay. So uh, same thing with, same thing with nature or essence. So, so if we look at these things, what we can see clearly here then is we have both divine and human aspects, right? Can everyone see that? The radiance of light is, is emanating from the sun. It's the same essence, right? But it's the, it's, it's the physical manifestation of the sun. The imprint is, it's the exact from the original, but there is this, um, 
again, visible manifestation. So let's, let's highlight this visible manifestation. Okay. What we have to acknowledge is that God, the father is invisible. He is the invisible God, but he's made visible in the son. And so John Calvin will actually say, let me quote John Calvin here. Um, I think this is very helpful. Our big dog, John Calvin, let me just, okay. I can't find the quote. I'll have to post it later, but essentially John Calvin was saying that all, that all analogies fall short. All analogies fall short because these are human analogies describing the divine, okay? The divine human relationship, okay? Is everyone tracking there with me? I can't find the quote. I had it here. But let, let, me, let me do another quote here. This is what John Calvin says here. The word, so apugasma is just the, the um, that's concerning the radiance. The word radiance means nothing else but visible light or refulgence such as our eyes can bear, and character is the vivid form of hidden substance. By the first word, we are reminded that without Christ, there is no light, but only darkness for us. God is the only true light by which it behooves us all to be illuminated. This light sh shines itself upon us, so to speak, only upon irradiation. By the second word, we are reminded that God is truly and really known in Christ, for he is not an obscure, shadowy image but his impress, which resembles him as money, the impress of the die with which it is stamped. The apostle indeed says, what is more than this, even that the substance of the father is in the manner engraved on the son. And so again, this is concerning the, the God man, Jesus Christ. This is not concerning the son in eternity's past. Is everyone tracking there with me? So again, I want to stress this, this language here concerns the visible manifestation of Jesus Christ. And then it's, it's, it's in some ways deficient because these are human analogies. These are physical analogies describing the human and the divine. Okay. So let's go to several passages of, of scripture to just really confirm this incredibly powerful passages. Yes. Yeah, so, so the sun, the, the sun goes to earth. So pro, so, so prior to the son taking on the incarnation, he's only God. It's not until he is born of a woman that he becomes man in time and space. Okay. The imprint that you are talking about here, uh, uh, sir, is it talks about that Jesus, when, when he arrived here on earth during the incarnation, he's also God. Yeah, so he's 100% God, 100% in the incarnation. He's both. But when Paul said in uh, Philippians 2, yeah. verse 5 down to 8, verse, uh, verse 5, I think 6, he said that uh, among, among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though was in the form of God, did not count equality with God, a things to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Yeah. Being in like man. So therefore yeah. he's not. So I'll just repeat your question for the sake of the video. So Jesus's question is that in, in, in Philippians 2, 5 to 11, it describes that, that Jesus was in the form of God. And then, and then he takes on the form of a servant. And so the, the, the exegetical conclusion, I'm not saying Jesus is making it, but by, but by many or, or some would be that he gave up his divinity, became a man, and then took it back again. And, and, Exegetically, I would say that's incorrect. Um, if if you do a, a a very careful exegetical study of that passage, my interpretation is that he gave up the status of he gave up the status of divine, of 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 divine um, um, position, but he never gave up his nature. Because if he does, then when he goes to the cross, he's only dying. He's giving a finite. <laughs> He's giving a finite sacrifice, not an infinite sacrifice, number one. Number two, there's moments, right? He could have called 12,000 12, legions. Like only the son of God has that type of power in, 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 in a moment. So there, throughout the gospels, you see just his divinity. It's not a man, like, right? So he, he commands the wind and the waves to cease. Like that's his divinity shining through. The, the nature, the power is there. So uh, that's so fundamental. And that, and, and, and that, that's actually, um, again, Jesus, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying generally that that was a, a heresy that historical thing. And that's why we have to be so careful with 
historical theology. That was a heresy that God, that Christ gave up his divinity and was just a man on earth and then took it back again. He's, he was always, he was always divine because if you say that he gave it up, then you're saying there's, there's change in the eternal son of God. There's change. And, and we would, we'd say, no, there's no change in the, the Trinity in the Trinity. As far as being goes, there's no change in God. So you're saying that, yes, yeah, sir. I, I, I agree with you. Uh, you're saying that the, the, imprint that you are talking here is jesus has a, that imprint when 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 he arrived here, here on earth doing that so so i'll just be clear let, let me highlight what i'm saying and then you can respond okay so what i'm saying is that we're so this description here what i'm where I, we're going to actually go to the passage of scripture some so passage of scriptures i'm saying that this is actually describing describing the the risen exalted uh lord jesus christ so this here who being the radiance of god this is already physical this is already physical the imprint it's already physical okay but it's but it's already after after his death, resurrection, and but even during his life, we, we're going to see a passage. We're going to see two passages that describe this radiance coming through in the incarnation. So I'm not even saying that this is not true during the incarnation. This is also true during the inc incarnation. But remember, this is written post-exaltation. Who is Jesus? Who is the Son? Now he is the 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 visible radiance of the invisible God. He is the the, the physical image of the invisible nature of God. So we can't see this as even pre-incarnation pre in no way questioning the, div the, the divine because he's already manifesting. He doesn't, he doesn't reveal God visibly until he comes in the incarnation, okay? And this is all concerning redemption, creation, providence in the um within the economy of creation this is nothing about the eternality of who god is as the trinity i want to I, I keep on i want to stress that let's go to several examples right now let's go first to john 1 1 to 17 okay and we're gonna we're gonna study this passage later in this in, in this in this class here okay so um everyone can see this on the screen here this is esv uh, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. So eternality of the word, eternality of the son, all things were made through him without him was nothing made that was made. So this is clearly divinity. John is sent by God to bear witness about the light. And so who is the light? The radiance of the glory of God. <laughs> right? So the light is, is the son, is the word, the true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world, coming down here. The word became flesh, right? So the son of God, eternal son of God takes on flesh. Again, does not impact his, the eternality of the son. That's separate. Okay. But he, but, but he comes to earth. He takes on flesh and he lives among us. And look at this. We have seen the glory, his glory, Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. At what level do we see his glory? Did they see his glory? For sure, glory has various connotations in healing, in, in honor, in activity. There's, there's various aspects of, of glory, okay? One of those, though, is that is this vision of the risen, exalted Christ. And so, even he says to Thomas, Thomas, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. So in seeing Christ in the incarnation, Jesus in the incarnation, um, you see the son, you see the father. Okay. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But what is the full vision of the, the, the full, and I'm not saying vision in, a, in an opaque spiritual way. I'm saying the real vision of who he is. Okay. Let's go now to Matthew 17. Uh, this is the transfiguration. So the disciples saw 
the risen, exalted Lord. After six days, Jesus took him, Peter and James, John, his brother, led them up to the mountain. He was transfigured before them, metamorphosis, right? Met met so there's that form A. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light. That is the glory of God revealed, right? That's in time and space. That is not to say that, that again, it's not impacting his divinity. This is the vision of the risen, exalted Lord, the imprint of God's nature in physical form, the radiance of glory. Let's go to another passage here. Let's go to, um, now this is Peter quoting his experience, uh, 2 Peter 1, verse 16. For we did not devise cleverly, for we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, right? And so later we're going to see in Hebrews 1, 3, right? Sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, right? We were eyewitnesses to the majesty. It's the same. It's a derivative of that same word of his majesty. When, we, when he received honor and glory from God, the father, the voice born to him by the majestic glory, the power and the coming of Christ, his majesty. This is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And so of course, the beloved son is the eternal son of God. And yet in time and space, he's also the son of David who, who becomes the son of God, right? He, he, the, the promise is made to David that, that your son will be, will be my son and your kingdom will have no end. All right. So, so we need to hold both, both. We need to hold both in both hands. And then this also deals with apologetics, just deals with revelation. We don't have time to go on all that. Let's do one more passage of scripture. Revelation 12, uh, Revelation 1 verses 12. Revelation 12 verses uh, 1 verses 12 to 20. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands was one like a son of man clothed in a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like wool, like snow. His eyes were like flaming, uh, were like a flame of fire. His feet, his feet were burnished bronze, refined in a furnace. His voice was like the war of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in full strength. That is insane, right? That's an, the, the, the sun is analogous. <laughs> the sun is analogous to the glory of the risen, exalted Lord. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. When, when we see the real reality of Jesus Christ, the, the visible manifestation of the eternal and visible God, this will be our response. We, when, we saw, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Fear not, I am the first and the last. That's, that's, that's eternality. He's, he's the first and the last, the living one. I died and behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and Hades. And I write, write these things that you've seen, those things that will take place after this, okay? And so here in, in Revelation, the, the, the description is that of the risen, exalted Lord we can include this incarnation for sure. We include the incarnation, but even in the incarnation, we see who he is truly forevermore. I'm going to go to one other passage to, to, further, to, to further clarify, because we can speak, we can speak of the, so, so one thing that I struggled with for a while was, can you, can you still speak of, of Jesus Christ as eternally Jesus Christ, because he's the God man. And we can speak like that because that's how the author of Hebrews speaks. So let's go to Hebrews. Um, so, yeah, go Pastor ahead. Tim, uh, can we say that uh, the Father and, and Jesus are two different gods? N no, absolutely not. So that's why we would say he's, it's, it's, it's one, uh, one God, one being, three persons. So th that's the mystery part. Yeah. 
That's the mystery part. I, I hope that everyone sees here that that this is very deep, okay? Maybe this is the first time you're hearing of this, it's very deep. And at the same time, it's so fundamental because this has been the fundamental debate in the church for the past two millennia, the Trinity and the nature and person of Christ. And so Sayang Talaga, that maybe you've never seen these debates or people have just said, whatever, just have this confession, but we haven't plumbed the depths because fundamentally it affects who our Lord is if we have a wrong view of who he is. And practically what Paul's saying, it affects the intercessory work of Jesus as priest. It affects, so think about this. So then this is another follow-up to, to Jesus's comment. And again, I'm not saying this is Jesus's interpretation, but it's a, a typical interpretation. If Jesus is only man and he gives up his divinity, how do we, how, he's not the son, but he's on earth, right? God has spoken to us through his son. So, so maybe that is the explicit contradiction to that, the, the, that type of exegetical conclusion, right? If, if Christ gives up, if Jesus, if the son gave up his divinity, then he's no longer God speaking to us through his son. He just becomes another prophet. Ah, it's the same old needs, the same old needs, baby, right? No, but if he has spoken to him climactically and definitively as the son, if he has revealed the father as the son, then that type of interpretation we cannot accept, and I would argue strongly when we get there, that that's not what Paul was saying, okay? But, but this is why other passages help us interpret Ephesians 2, 5 to 11, and historical theology helps us to see how thousands of, of church leaders have dealt with these issues. And for us not to consider, oh my goodness, we are, we are in a boat in, in, a, in, in Yolanda without an anchor. We're in, we're in Yolanda, the storm of Yolanda without an anchor. That's, that's the closest analogy I can give. Here we go. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, forever. <laughs> so that's, just, that's actually a quotation of uh, the Old Testament and, 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 and Yahweh. The Yahweh, he does not change. He is the same. And so from a, what I'm trying to get, big, broad perspective, okay, we can speak of the eternality of Jesus Christ because he is the son of God. Okay. Is everyone tracking there with me? Just as if you were to move from a child to an adult, even my, even my, my wife, maybe she changes her name, right? But she still fundamentally is the same person. Okay. And so here again, I'm using analogy. It's weak. It's deficient. Maybe you could find some, some holes in that. Jesus Christ, we can speak of his eternality. We can refer to the, the eternality of Christ, whether it's concerning God's purpose in eternity's past, whether it's concerning his divinity as the son of God. We don't want to split this all up. Okay, is everyone tracking there with me? Essentially here for highlighting the divine and the human is to deal with the specific um, truths that we need to hold to. But as a comprehensive package, package Jesus Christ is God, the son of God himself. And he is, he is the never changing God. We can look at that comprehensively. And we see that here in the same author. Okay. All right, let's move on here. Uh, we're so over time. We are so over time. Here we go. Okay. So if ever you were to doubt, so Jesus and, and those who were struggling, and I'm not saying Jesus is struggling. I'm just saying with, with this thing, if ever there was a doubt that, that, you know, obviously this is focusing upon the physical. If ever there was a doubt like, oh, we're back to just him being human. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, if ever you're to doubt, action. He upholds the universe. Christ is upholding the universe by the word of his power. Or we could say, to, 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 to write this out, through his powerful word. And that's, that's picking up on Revelation uh, 1 and also 19, right? The, the, the two-edged sword that's coming out of his mouth, right? His what's power other, is his what's, word. What, yep. What's the other meaning of upholding uh, in, in, in layman's term? Uh, yep. Here we go. How do we translate upholding? So this week would say maintaining, 
sustaining. So um, if you can imagine the actual, the actual Greek word is like bearing. He's bearing up the world. Like you can imagine like holding up. He's literally, he's keeping everything together. Yeah, I think the other word is carrying. Um, yeah, so we could say carrying, bearing. But, but the, the significance here is maintaining and sustaining. The, the, without his work in a moment, it would be over. And so here already then in saying this, this is divine. This is divine action. This is God the Father type action. And this is why the Son is no different than God the Father. One being, equal, but the second person. Now look here though. Now we're going to go into the humiliation here. So having made a purification of sin. So presupposed in here is the humiliation of Jesus, the, the humiliation incarnation, right? He, he becomes a man and he offers up the sacrifice to purify sins. So purifying of sins, this is the, the cleansing activity. The purifying of sins, the cleansing activity is the sacrifice the atonement, he's atoning for our sins. And so here, I would put the gospel here. If I was preaching this baby, gospel baby right here, come on, explicit, fundamental to who Jesus Christ is, is the gospel. The fundamental act, the fundamental act of his earthly ministry, no doubt he healed many people. No doubt he preached the word. He revealed God to us, but his fundamental act, and we see that in the name Jesus, right? Who is Jesus? The one who will save his people from their sins, right? Savior from sins. That's what Jesus' name means. And so fundamentally, you ask, why did Jesus come to earth? John 3, 16, for God loved the world in this way. He sent his only begotten son that whoever believes, everyone that believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And so fundamentally, Jesus means Yahweh saves, the Lord saves. Fundamentally, Jesus' act in his humiliation and incarnation is paying for our sins, right? The sins of his people. Now watch this. Then we have exaltation. Exaltation. After after making a purification of sins, he sat down right at the right hand of the majesty on high. So this is the, this is the exaltation and this is over all. And this would be Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 19 to 23, right? Ephesians 19 to 23. And this concerns lordship over all. Lordship over all, over all things. And in saying that he sits down, look at this. Look at this. Now, maybe for us, we don't have this issue, but maybe some in the Philippines do, right? Everyone's pursuing after angels. The angel's going to give them a word. Have you heard of this before in the Philippines? The angels, right? <laughs> I have a word from an angel, right? I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to make fun, but I, I, you know, in some ways it is, it is laughable because when you have the sun, like, why are we going to angels, right? Uh, the Jews had the same issue here. Having become superior to the angels and the level of superiority, this is a comparison here. The level of superiority concerns fundamentally the name, the name. And this is none other than the Lord the Lord's name. Now it's Jesus's name, right? So Ephesians 2, 5 to 11, right? Uh, uh, Jesus, at the name of Jesus, everyone will bow. Every knee will bow. Every, every mouth will confess Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. There is no other salvation under heaven by which we, will, we are to be saved except through the name of of Jesus. And so this name concerns the Lord God himself. The Lord's name. And so again, this is inherited. So this is 
this is his uh this is highlighting his human nature and role and notice this here this is let me write some stuff down here this is this is office of king office of king and this is office of priest right so i hope everyone can see that i'm going to try to share this i'll try to share this this um this text here okay so think about this with me for a second okay so we have we have in this passage right son of god divine nature human nature jesus jesus implied right so so jesus his name is implied here this is implied the name is implied christ christ is present through psalm christ is present here the son is present the three offices are present prophet priest king the humiliation is present the exaltation is present the gospel is present and then there's the comparison of the revelation to prophets and to angels the 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 jews had believed that the angels had given the the the, the law was given through angels and so here we have my opinion, the most concise, most comprehensive description of theology of who Jesus is and how God has acted in him. So powerful, so amazing, phenomenal, no comparison. Amen is right. So this is why we started with this passage so that we can see comprehensively the big picture of who Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ is the son of God. The rest of the semester now, we will be looking at this in time and space from, from Genesis to Revelation. So we have 11 more of these, and we're going to go into the details. So no doubt there's going to be huge discussion in, in, in Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Uh, we'll get to all these different passages. There's more than this, so maybe we'll have one day Christology too. But this is most fundamental, and, and I really hope that you're getting, I mean, it's free, but I hope you're getting your money's worth. <laughs> I really hope, I hope this is the case. And then my challenge to each one of you, my challenge to each one of you is that, so let's, let's, let's end all this. Okay. So let's, let's think practical and let's think preaching. Okay. Let's think about preaching this passage. Okay. What is the primary question that you want to answer in, in preaching this passage? Thinking about being, doing, knowing, if I'm preaching this to our to our audience, and we're thinking about call to action. You're preaching this sermon, Hebrews 1, 1 to 4. What's the primary object that you want? Knowing, excellent Henry. So if I'm preaching this passage, I'm not telling people to do anything. I'm, I'm like, like action wise. I'm saying you need to know this stuff. Repent and believe. <laughs> I want you to know who the Lord of the universe is. And then from, from this knowing, look at this here. From this knowing, we have assurance, right? We talked about it. There's assurances. There is the gospel. Later, we can deal with the call to action. But right now, if I was preaching this sermon, this is who our Lord and Savior is. And once you go through with what it is, Looking at this, so let's let's go back. Your assurances, right? God has spoken to us in the last days. Incredible assurance, right? Certainty for the word of God, he, whom He appointed heir of all things. Jesus is the Lord, right? You're not sovereign; He is. So rest in Him. He's the one who created the world. So He He's a, everything is under His His power. If He created, right? Do we know who God is? Yes, because he is the very radiance of the glory of God. He is the exact imprint. He is the physical image of the Lord. Not only about the past, but in the present, he is maintaining and sustaining. During the crazy COVID, during wars in Ukraine, God, the Lord Jesus Christ is maintaining the world. You can rest in that. He has made purification of sin. So, so we don't stay in the corner terrified of, of 
kissing the sun lest you perish in the way, right? He's made the purification of sins. He's sitting down on high. He's superior to everything, even the angels, right? There's, Deba, there's a huge fear for angels and demonic powers in the Philippines. There should be no afraid. Don't be afraid to walk by the cemetery. Go to the cemetery, cemetery 1 a.m., no problem. Go. On all saints, do it. No fear. What do you say? Walang takot? Is that right? Walang takot? No fear. Come on. Top five passages of all time. This is one of them. Top five passages of all time. All, all of your members, what is the fundamental passage of, of who we believe in? Hebrews 1, 1 to 4. <laughs> That's not to say that, that John 1, 1 to 17 isn't so fundamental or Ephesians 1, uh, 19 to 23 or Colossians 1, 15 to 20 or Philippians 2, 5 to 11. I'm not saying all that. Most fundamental. It, 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 it carries the whole kit and caboodle, everything. It's here. 